All right, we're talking about being stuck. We're talking about what it's like to be in a place where you've got ambition to do something, but you don't know the process to get it done, and you continue to try the same thing over and over and get the same results, which are not giving you the yield that you're looking for. And you're overwhelmed. It just The process is big enough that you're overwhelmed. You know, or at least you think you know where you want to go, but it just smacks you in the face every time you get started. Yeah, like trying to figure out the 2290, the IRS 2290. It's killing me. I don't even know what a 2290 is. Yeah, it's be glad. All right. So how do you get unstuck? We're doing that this episode. Hey, Jerry, we talk about living sober on purpose all the time. What is real life for real families? Well, real life for real families is just dealing with the trials and tribulations of daily life as they come. But we're also looking for growth, reaching our goals. We've had different things come in our lives that we want to achieve. How have we made that happen? We work with people who are talented, who we admire, who we want to, we want some of their attributes to be imprinted on us. And that came to us through several sessions of coaching with some international coaches and also some local coaches, which has really changed my life. How has it moved you forward? Oh, it's definitely given me the ability to have a sounding board and to be able to talk through things that allowed me to figure out where I was and and what I wanted, having somebody to help direct me. And that's where coaching comes into play. I'm Tanya Joya, and I am a recovery coach, someone that helps you get unstuck, figure out what's next, and deal with fear and anxiety after someone in your family gets sober or during the sobriety process. Because people often feel like... They often feel like the other shoe is going to drop. And that really is a hard, stuck place. You don't feel like you can move forward with your dreams, with your goals, because you're constantly watching and waiting for something to happen. How about making a change in your life and looking forward? And to learn more about me, hop onto the thejoyousfamily.com, the Joyous Family Facebook group, or the Joyous Family Instagram. And I'd love to do a discovery call with you. Just about 15 minutes of your time to see if coaching is right for you. Thank you so much, and I look forward to hearing from you. Sobriety can be challenging even for the best of families. It takes a lot to move the family from striving to thriving. Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, sobriety is just a a new way of doing things, and it a lot of times it may feel like it's completely uncharted territory with a lot, without a lot of experience. It's so easy to fall victim to the belief that once sobriety happens, that it's going to fix all the issues. Hey, you're so good at those lead-ins. That's why we're going to talk about coaching today. Beyond therapy, beyond sponsors, there's another step for growth. So we're going to share a little bit about our personal experience with that and how that works. Coach is different because they are the ones who deal with forward motion and forward growth. So a coach is someone who helps you and walks beside you in setting goals, achieving goals, and helping you be accountable. That's the person that you wish you had when you stepped onto the court of life. So what do you look for? characteristics do you look for when you're trying to pick your coach? You're looking for somebody who is qualified by some agency or body, often the International Coaching Federation. Also someone who aligns with you, who has similar values, but a coach is really someone who is an expert in the process, not someone who is an expert in the area you're working on. Interesting. So are you a qualified coach? I'm working on being a qualified coach. Why is why is accreditation important? Coaches can be anybody from anywhere, and you really want somebody who can support you in the areas that you are working on. It's very similar to the coach that we used when we did the Dave Ramsey program. Who did we choose? His name was Mike. He was awesome. Mike and PJ. And they were qualified through the Dave Ramsey program to do coaching on budgeting. Did Mike know everything there was to know about our lives and how our money worked and how our budgets happened? By the end of it, he probably did. <laughs> <laughs> but did he really know everything about that? No, you're right, though. Now that you bring that up, I, I can see what you mean because he understood the process well enough to just take it as uh, take the information as we gave it to him and plug it in where it needed to be used. So did he need to know exactly what job you did or could you have been working anywhere? We just were working with the process of the figures. I think you're right. I think he could have done it with any occupation or with any people. 
So what he did was walk us through the process of how to get ourselves organized with our money. And what else did he do as we were doing that? Um, I'm not sure what you mean, Tanya. What else did he do? What did you not want him to do? Oh, I did not want marriage counseling. And did he do marriage counseling? He he did not. And so he walked us through the process of doing the budget. He was coaching us on one specific area in our lives, right? That's correct. Now, did we have to do some things outside of that? Oh, yes. We had lots of work to do. So a coach also offers you structured homework. Not homework that the coach picks, but homework that you pick, what you think is reasonable for you to do and the area that you need to go into. Sounds good. When do we start? What about the sounding board that Mike provided for us? Yeah, he was good. He was he was open to listen to any of the topics that pertain to the area which we were asking him to work with us on and uh and he was always offer he was always willing to offer feedback if he had experience in that. So one of the things that a coach does is helps with a dynamic monologue in the sense that often people need to he- hear themselves say it before they understand what's going on in their head. How about the monkey in your mind? What's the monkey? The gerbil in the cage that keeps going round and round or the monkey mind that keeps going over and over and over? Yeah, oh man, do I know that recently. So a facilitated monologue is what helps people get things out on the table. One thing that a coach does not do is make decisions for you. They may bring you back to where you started to help you with powerful questions and making things happen because often what happens is we get stuck. Have you ever been stuck? Never. (laughs) So what happens when you get stuck? Uh, I just, you know, I lock up and I become paralyzed in decision making. So what's another place where you've been coached? When you're setting up your trekking business? Uh, not a little bit, I guess. Not so much in the field. But you're right, because this wasn't about the field or the, the, the work involved. It was about the process of thinking through it and building a plan and, and having my mind right as I tackled each step of the way. So when Richard was coaching you there, he was coaching you in two aspects. You were having to do two things simultaneously. Tell me, what do you mean? Leave a job, start a business. Yes. So what formats did he coach you in? Then start a job and leave a business. What do you mean? But how did he exactly coach you? Oh, well, he uh, just helped me to build you know, a plan. Uh, honestly, he just would really listen to what I was doing. And it, and he said, yep, that sounds like you're doing what you need to do and keep, <laughs> keep doing what you're doing. That's pretty much how it went. How helpful was just the listening? Oh, very helpful. Very, very helpful. Just to be able to have somebody who is an experienced person working with other people be able to tell me, no, I've worked with a lot of people and it really sounds like you're putting in the time and the effort to, to be successful at this. And what did he do when he was listening? He made eye contact. He he gave responsive body gestures. I don't know. He was just engaged. But did he talk over you? No. Did he give you suggestions? Yes. How often did he give you suggestions? Rarely. And did he allow you to talk through what you needed to talk through? Yes, he most certainly did. And the suggestions that he gave me were, were primarily form-based as a as a way to help me direct my thinking rather than my process. Did he make any decisions for you? Never. Were you comfortable in bringing things to him that you didn't have an answer to or you didn't have a decision ready made? I most certainly was, yes. And how did that help you come through leaving a very lucrative job and moving into something that was a little more risky? It helped a lot. We'll we'll see if it was worth it, but (laughs) it helped a lot. (laughs) You're not helping my cause. Any. <laughs> you want to do that again? I had my mind made up already. So, well, but I'm just, lots of people will have their mind made up. It is filling the gap. How do you step from I am ready to do this or I want to do this to actually making it happen? Many people struggle with the actual making it happen. Yeah, I can see that. I can. I mean, we struggled with it for a, a long while before we were able to pull it off and had agreement to do something different. And how did Richard's coaching help you step from 
this is what I want to do to this is what I'm going to do. Yeah, so the, it it helped me because I had been on the fence for a long time and what I was about to do or was contemplating doing was a huge risk. And, you know, just to be able to have somebody there who understood me, who knew my history and who knew my work ethic, be able to tell me that this is something you can be successful at. You can be successful at anything that you're putting this amount of effort into. It, it helped a lot. And I don't know that I'd have had the courage to do it had I not had his coaching. Was he emotionally involved in your success? No, of course not. So your decisions, he didn't get hooked into your decisions and he didn't push you into something that you felt uncomfortable with. No, he did not. And when you felt uncomfortable, what did he do? He said, that's normal. And, you know, if, you, if you're not scared, if you're not uncomfortable, you're probably not thinking about this with, a, with enough clarity. You're not looking at it with, with a wide enough lens. So it's, you're supposed to, this is supposed to be uncomfortable. What kind of process, process options did he give you? I'm not sure what you mean. So SMART goals. So, the, yeah, I mean, we definitely had some acronyms that we worked through in order to build the plan. Um, and SMART was one of them, which, you know, you can work with Tanya on understanding a little bit more specifically. <laughs> <laughs> Specific, measured, achievable, mm -hmm. or agreed upon. Depending on how many people are involved. Right. Reachable. Realistic. Realistic or reachable. And time bound. Time bound, right. So specific, measurable, achievable, agreed upon, reachable, time bound. Mm -hmm. So we looked at all those things when we were d doing the trucking piece. The other thing is you can have two different sets of goals. You can, there are two ways to look at goals. You can look at them as destination goals or completion goals, which is buying the truck, building the business, right? Yep. Or process goals. How do I want to handle my relationship with my wife while I'm on the road, which is an ongoing, it's not a destination goal, right? Correct, correct. And how do I want to handle my relationship with my kids? So those are just a few things that we would talk about in coaching. The other piece about coaching is that this is somebody, the sounding board is super important, but what's even more important is that you hear yourself. And so as you were hearing yourself, were you puzzling out? Did you have all the answers you really needed? No, I mean... I it's been my experience both with coaching and in life that a lot of times you just need to hear yourself. You know, you need somebody else to just talk through it with and they can just be there to listen. And, and as you talk through it out loud, you figure, I figure out a lot of the things that I'm probably looking for them to answer and I'm figuring them out just by divulging it or discovering where you need to go for research. Yeah, exactly. And then what happens when you need more information. Does the coach get that for you or do no, you get that? No, they, no, they do not. They, I mean, in my experience, just by doing that, realizing that there are gaps in my information stream, I am motivated to go find that information without the coach telling me to do anything. What about aha moments? Oh, uh, hundreds of them for sure. Can you give us any specifics on those? I cannot, unfortunately, no. Really? Yeah, can you tell me one that you remember? There, there wasn't a great aha moment? No, not that I can re recall at this moment. So I had some brilliant aha moments because I also coached with these folks and I had some brilliant aha moments on where I was stuck and Richard brought one to me specifically that said, you have been saying you want to learn about a business and earn X amount of dollars. Well, you've spent all this time learning instead of actually doing. I remember that one, but it was more... More, more specifically, I think what he noticed was you had written down a goal and it said, gain the knowledge to earn X amount of dollars per year. So it was not specific, right? It was very realistic, but it was not specific. It was not, it was a very achievable. It was very realistic, but it was not the goal that you really wanted, the goal was misdefined, right? It was, I, I think it was pretty much learn about how to make X amount of dollars a year instead of actually stepping in and doing it. And you're right. It wasn't specific. It wasn't measurable. It wasn't agreed upon between, see, agreed upon can be between me and you or you and you and you or you in a group of people. Yeah, or, or achievable. 
So learn the skills is very achievable, right? Right. And so I've spent all this time learning the skills. So Richard has seen this tag in my house for three or four years now. I've spent all the time learning the skills, but never stepping in and actually doing the skills. And actionable, right? I mean, at some point, you just have to do it. Right. And the other aha moment was I had when they looked at the wheel of life and we'll put that up on the uh, blog. The wheel of life looks at different areas of your life, work, home, spirituality, relationships, and you pinpoint where you are on a scale of one to 10. And then you pick the ones that you're really interested on moving forward. And so when we're talking about sobriety, what are the ones that were, when you do get sober from whatever hurt habit or hang up is going on, where is it that you want to move forward? Because you just don't want to stay with sober. What would staying with sober look like? Oh, I mean, it just means don't drink. So does that get you anywhere past no, where your no, life was? No, absolutely not. No, no. I mean, we want to grow with our use of the steps and in our um, social experience and and our ability to be charitable and generous and kind and lovable and honest and and yeah, I mean, there's so many different areas to grow. Sobriety is just a matter of, you know, don't use. And it's only getting to the place where you can start the growth, right? Exactly. Well, you can grow in, in an addiction, but it, you have this challenge or you have this hurdle that you're putting before yourself. But, you know, I, yeah, so leaving... Entering into sobriety just all of a sudden removes the shackles and allows somebody to really run free. The question is, where where do they run? So it's kind of like if you were at the start of a race and somebody took off the 15-pound weights on your legs, you can stand there and not run the race, or you can move forward and run the race. Yeah. And moving forward takes some effort to do that. And we did we did a lot of therapy to get to that direction. And coaching. We didn't do any coaching. I think that's where we got stuck. Maybe you're right. So when we got through with our therapy or when our therapist said, hey, I've given you all the tools, we kind of went, okay, you've given us all the tools. We're really confused on how we actually implement these on a daily basis. Yeah, no, that's a good thing. That's a good point because I I just had an aha moment, (laughs) which I can speak about because it was very much like I think what you experienced individually when working with Richard, which was we were asking for all these tools, but we weren't asking how to implement them, right? Because he kept telling us the same thing, which was you just got to go do it. And we're like, yeah, but we need this this next little piece of information, which allows us to just do it. And the reality was, you know, the hard part was to do it. The easy part was to learn how to do it. That's where if a co- if we had worked with a coach, like we worked with our budget coach who called us or we talked to them once a week and we set up an attainable goal for each week on how we were going to do our behavior differently or act toward each other differently or change our family patterns from not working or dysfunction in, um, in addiction to functioning to, in, not to dysfunction in addiction to functioning outside of addiction and not just functioning but thriving outside of addiction so the coach would have called and said hey how are you doing this week what would you like to work on and we would say you know we're really struggling with x then we would have made a plan to move forward that's what we didn't yeah, do with the therapist something measurable that we didn't have when we worked with the therapist and it you know we had a good therapist i'm not saying that but he only went so far. He dealt with dysfunction, with healing, with dealing with putting pieces back together and with dealing with the past and trauma. We needed someone who was dealing with forwardness, growth, and how do we make the next step happen? And that's where we kind of missed a piece. And that's where a coach would come in and say, okay, what is it that will move you forward? What is it that will give you growth? What is it that will change the patterns that are happening right now? now. And we missed that whole piece. Yeah, I think you're right. I I never made that connection before, but I agree. And so that's when we're looking at coaching. That's the difference between coaching and counseling. It's not that counselors can't be coaches, but coaches are not going to go into the past, deal with trauma, deal with um, those things that are buried deep underneath. They're going to deal with forward 
and growth. Do we want to talk at all about um, any differences that might exist between sponsors and coaches? Sure. Okay. What differences might exist between sponsors <laughs> and coaches? Were, I thought you were going to take that. <laughs> sponsors also have some of that responsibility. You, you told me very clearly, and say it again because we've got it in a podcast, what your sponsor told you he was there for. Yeah. Well, he was like, I am here to help you maintain sobriety and to learn how to use the steps and work the steps. I am not a marriage counselor. I am not here to help you stay out of jail. I am not here to help you get your kids back. That is not what I do. What I what I do and, and what I'm willing to do is to work with you in, through this program and to main, achieve and maintain sobriety. I mean, I was already sober, but you hear what I'm saying. And so in 12-step programs, there's a very specific function of the sponsor. They can help with other things. But again, a coach has a way that they work that is about forward and growth. It is not just about sobriety. Even in Al-Anon, it is not just about keeping yourself in a sober state. And there's a possibility to uh, fall out there, to go out, as Jerry would say, uh, also at Al-Anon. But a coach is looking at whatever you bring to the table and saying, hey, is this realistic? Is this actionable? And can we measure it and set up a time frame for it? And how do you want to do that? And a sponsor, you know, to work the steps, you got to dig up some of the stuff of the past, you know. So that is exactly counter to what I think you're describing with the coach thing. All right. So that's the difference between a sponsor. Now, there are a couple other people, a mentor and a consultant. Do you know what those people do different from a coach? No. Okay. You are hiring those people because they have expertise in the field that you want to go to. So when you sat down with Rocky and had lunch about trucking, he's a consultant because he knows. Right. He knew the industry. Right. So he's not asking you to make decisions. He's imparting information to you. Yeah. And unlike Rocky, you know, I would think that an experienced consultant is versed in, you know, giving away this information. Not that Rocky was trying to hold anything back, but he wasn't talented at explaining the things. And, and where I would think that a consultant, that was their, their skill was, let me, ex- you know, let me explain to you the industry as opposed to you fishing and maybe getting a bite. Well, consultants and mentors have expertise in the fields that you want to be. Yeah, in. I would say Rocky was a mentor more than a consultant. So they are, they're sometimes on the same plane with you, but they often have more information. Again, back to the coach. The coach has process information. And they can help you process what you want to make happen. They're not going to make decisions for you, nor are they going to tell you how it should be or how they have done it. They are going to let you sort out what's important to you. And if you need information, they're going to help you construct a way to figure out how to get it. Fun. It makes it. it I want a coach. It makes you own it, right? So if, if you don't figure it out for yourself, how likely are you to to push back against it? Oh, very much. I mean, you look at the way therapists work. It's just, I know we're talking about coaching, but look at it from a therapy perspective. They hate telling you what they're thinking. They always want to just ask you questions to lead you in that direction. But when, say, when your other corporate job said, you must do it like this, yeah. and you thought you had a better way. How or your much mother. Kind of- or if your mother. <laughs> <laughs> but the real statement is if your mother believes in you, you can do anything. Yeah, right. right. I, I think you're right. I, I, I should be able to fly and leap tall buildings. In your a single mother mount, did believe stop in, in you. Stop in a locomotive, <laughs> yeah, the whole thing. So the coaching piece is something that I am adding into my life that I'm working on right now. And we're going to make a very special offer that's only going to last for a little while as I am learning how to do this. I was coached in 2016. That's how I closed my spa business, successfully left that and sold it and went on with my life. And it was a really wonderful process of getting to know myself, figuring out what was next for me and how to make that happen. And we were really lucky that I closed that business a year in advance of your promotion because what would it have been like for me running around trying to close that business, deal with all those clients and try and move a hundred miles away? That would have been 
challenging to say the least. So I'm super thankful. And it is something that I really feel the Lord is calling me to serve with. I think it offers you the opportunity to step into what God is calling you to do when oftentimes we feel like we just don't hear. All right. Well, you teased us with this special offer, but I'm still curious to know what it is because I don't even know what it is. I'm not going to drop the special (laughs) offer here. We're going to put it in a commercial at the tag. So you can look for it there. I also am looking for people who just want to talk about how they see their family after sobriety. So I'm taking those as inquiry calls. That's something to talk about. And if you PM me, with an inquiry call on Facebook, or we have it on our website, I will offer you a free coaching session. If you preventative maintenance me? (laughs) Personal message Oh, personal message. In my my industry, it's preventative maintenance. But personal message on Facebook. So that's the big thing. I am looking to talk to several people, several families who have gone through the sobriety process and are working through how they're going to move into thriving. And I have some great questions and we'll have a good time and we'll laugh a lot and that will get you a free coaching session. What about families who still struggle? I am happy to talk with families who still struggle as well. We, we will talk about whether working on coaching and 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 just to be clear, but by still struggle, I mean still suffer with a member with, with, with a hurt habit or hang up. Yes. So let's talk to, that's the fine line between coaching and therapy. There may need to be therapy. There may need to be coaching and you can coach and do therapy at the same time, just not on the same issues. I didn't know that. Yes. So that is the offer guys for you who listen to the podcast and we absolutely love you. That is going to be front and center on the joyous family blog and it is also, you're also able to go on The Joyous Family and PM me over there so that I can talk to you and I will get right back to you within 24 so hours. go to the website and PM you? The- yes, thejoyousfamily.com. Okay, and then there's a, a, a window or something that you open? Yep. Where is it? It's on thejoyousfamily.com. Right on the homepage? On the homepage. Okay. And we'll put it right out there. And then you can also go to The Joyous Family Facebook page. And PM me or message me from there and I will get right back to you and we'll talk and then I'll offer you a free coaching session after that. Well, you heard it here first. Just go out to the the Joyous Family page and uh, preventative maintenance Tanya and she'll she'll get back with you. Preventative maintenance Tanya, you're such a (laughs) goo. (laughs) All right. So we really hope that you give us a call. We are certainly interested in what you have to say and we've been doing this podcast for over six months now wow we are good at this now (laughs) we're still learning lots so be sure and go to thejoyousfamily.com there will be a bar on the top that you just click and you'll be able to send me a message and or go to the facebook page the joyous family and send me a message there and i will get back to you within 24 hours please let me know that you want to talk a little bit more about where your family is stuck i'd like to know how how our listeners thought about this podcast i mean this was like as unrehearsed and off the cuff as anything we've done what did you guys think uh, please give us some feedback on this one it, to me it felt like it came out pretty well <laughs> Really? I'm serious. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll see you soon. Okay, bye-bye. So the new adventures have started with the Joyous Family. Ooh. We are on the road. On the road again. Where have you been so far? What well, was that a copyright infringement? Probably. What about, what about eastbound and down, loaded <laughs> up and trucking? <laughs> about that? So where have you been so far? I've been to uh, Colorado Springs, to Denver, both in rush hour. I've been to Vernal, Utah, and um, I think that's about it. Yeah, I kind of went back and forth between Denver a couple times. And where are you headed? Next stop is going to be Peterson Air Force Base to pick up uh, 42,000 pounds of MREs to bring to Lackland Air Force Base. Outside of San Antonio, Texas. Never been there. Never been there. All right. So you can see all these things on thejoyousfamily.com. Does that mean I have to video stuff? Yes. You have to video things and put them on Instagram and the Joyous Family Instagram, the Joyous Family Facebook page, and... 
Where else can they hear about our new special offer? Oh, at the Joyous Family webpage. Yeah, that's right. So I am starting a family coaching business. We're calling it Recovery Coaching right now. It will be Christian-based. And I would love to talk to you about your sobriety process. I know you have a great story. I want to hear how you went from sobriety to thriving because we know that's not the easiest thing. So contact me and there's a phone link. There's an email link. I haven't set up a text link yet, but you can get me through all of those places. And if you contact me, we will have a short little conversation and then I will offer you a free coaching session after Very that. Very cool. So if she doesn't get right back to you, don't don't take it personal. She doesn't get right back to me either. So just be patient. <laughs> She'll get back to that you. That is not true. But we'd love to see you over on the Instagram and Facebook channel. We're looking forward to hearing from you. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.